Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Vulcan tutorial So let's get started Alright, so first of all we have a commit from Boat Kerm Hopefully I spelled it right But he said auto set window resolution removed in necessary function Instead of hard coding resolution, assign monitors resolution when full screen specified We don't need to destroy window by hand Already GFW destroying window when we call GFW terminate all right, so let's go to his commit. Let's see the files changed. All right, there you go. So that's what he changed, or at least that's what he proposed, and I accepted his changes through the pull request. So uh, setting width and height to monsters resolution. So if state window full screen, then we basically get the mode of the monitor, right? And then we set the window width to the monitor's width. Of course, uh, you get the monitor with through its video mode. Uh, as you can see, JFW uh, gets video mode, then you pass in the window monitor, as you can see here, which we already have gotten from get primary monitor, and the same thing for height. And that's basically it. And as he said that he removed also JFW destroy window, because he said that, well, when you terminate JFW, it automatically does that for you, basically. All right, so I, I like to explicitly destroy stuff, but I mean, uh, it's fine. It's it's since we actually, you know, like terminate, like we're not creating windows and recreating them and, 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 and crazy stuff like that. Basically, the window just get destroyed uh, the moment we terminate GFW anyway. So this is a valid uh, reason to, to remove it for now, at least, at least for now. Uh, so yeah, now in fact when you uh, go ahead do this, there you go, nice stuff. Now it's still working. Of course, I pulled up, I pulled the uh, the commit. Okay, basically, I you just say git pull, I think. Uh, maybe you also specify the branch, but I don't know. In either way, I I actually done it using my IDE. But anyway, so where there is the change all right so the, my ide have gave me one suggestion which is it says initializing gfw vid mode aka struct gfw vid mode asterisk or pointer with an expression of type const to gfw vid mode blah 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 anyway it says that it discards qualifiers now the thing is gfw get video mode it doesn't return just GF, gfw vid mode pointer right as you can see, it returns const pointer, a constant pointer. And a constant pointer in, in C basically means read only, right? So you're not supposed to dereference the, the mode, right? And then uh, like write into it, basically. Uh, and this actually runs just fine, but it's better to say const. So you enforce that rule, basically. And that's what the IDE is telling me to do. And that's the only thing that we... And the the uh, comment is not needed for now, uh, so yeah. Uh, since the the code looks like it's documenting itself, anyways. Uh, so that is nice. All right. So if state window full screen now, if we actually set it the full screen, uh, there we there we go. Full screen true. And let's do this. Now it's actually full screen. It's just that I'm not clearing the window. That's why. But in fact, indeed, right now, I'm in full screen right now, as you can see. Uh, now um, I just clicked Alt-Tab. Let's go Alt-Tab again. Alt-Tab, Alt-Tab. There you go. And it's so seamless. All right. So, yeah, that's really nice. Um, now I don't really uh, care much about full screen. but So we're just going to set it back to false now in fact we're gonna start by um, creating a swap chain now the swap chain is kind of interesting but uh, uh, first I'm gonna try to rewrite the code and just explain uh, through it right so instead of just keep on talking mindlessly but yeah anyways uh, git q after that we're gonna create the swap chain by the way, we have a lot of things to, to fix about um, the window. 
but I'm, I'm gonna defer that for later on okay when we actually want to care about resi resizing the window and the full screen for now we're just gonna assume that the window is not resizable and that the window is not full screen we're uh, although I don't think full screen have a lot of um, but in any way uh, we're just not we're gonna assume that full screen resizable is false for now okay we're not gonna care about them so create swap chain and here of course we're gonna pass in the state and we also need to do another thing which is to create the swap chain images but in fact um create swap chain so let's actually create a, a function right there void create swap chain and this of course will get the state as you can see there you go nice lovely now create swap chain actually have multiple steps there is indeed a lot of steps uh there but for now i think let's maybe just do them in one function maybe later on i may actually you know like fragment it in multiple fragments into multiple pieces but anyway so first of all i'd i like to it's like as a beginner also i like to actually create first of all uh, use the function that will do the job which is in this case vk create swap chain and now that function and by the way as you can see it ends with khr because it is an extension it's not part of a standard vulcan uh, so yeah here we uh, add state dot device as you can see next up we need the swap chain create info as you can see when i since i have an ide which is really useful I just use the function that I'm gonna use at the end of the day to create the, the my actual target, right? Which is swap chain in this case. And then it just tells me what I need, okay? So in, in this case, I need a, a swap chain create info, KHR. Uh, so let's just say create info for now. And in fact, I'm gonna pass in a point a reference to it or a pointer, should I say, or whatever. Anyways, and then state allocator. All right, next up, we also, I'm going to give it a reference to state.swapchain. Swap chain. Let's go. All right. Uh, so, yeah. Pretty much. Nice stuff. All right, so for the swap chain, I'm going to actually create that field. There you go. As you can see, VK, swap chain, KHR, swap chain. All right, nice stuff. Uh, so this part was basically the the uh, the normal setup, the initial setup, and now we're actually getting more involved into the real real thing. So yeah. Anyways, all right, let's go ahead. Now I need the this local variable. Create new local variable. Create info. There you go. Create info. Nice. Equal to. And let's open up this thing. And let's see what we got. Okay, in fact, in fact, instead of doing it this way, really, I like to, to just inline it here. So just say this, vk, swap chain, um, create info, khr, and then just initialize it here. All right, so p, q, family, indices. All right, back. Okay, so let's see what we got here, what we need. All right, so let's see, q, family, indices. Uh, first of all, there is the surface, which we already have. So let's actually set that, see the surface. And by the way, let me not forget the S type. That's the first thing that you would want to do all, all times. S type is equal to VK structure type, uh, swap chain, create info KHR. Okay, lovely. Now we got the S type down, the surface down. What we need also, we need the Q family indices and the qfamily index count all right qfamily index count is one we all we're only going to be using one qfamily i think and then qfamily indices is equal to an array in my case i only have one q so i'm just going to go with this guy so qfamily indices uh what is the type of qfamily indices though it's un32t okay un32t let's go nice stuff and then i'm going to initialize it with or in fact, instead of doing this, I can probably just pass it directly. Okay, let's pass it directly. State dot uh, Q family. There you go. All right. So it's just one 
I uh, don't have to bother to create an array and stuff like that. So nice stuff. I can just pass in the index. All right, lovely. Next up, what we need also. There is flags. I don't think we're going to use flags. There's also clipped, which is quite interesting. Uh, I'm going to set it to true. And what clipped is basically, so if you have two windows, right? So let's say you have this window, right? This window and this window, like, right? Okay. Uh, now the thing is, what happens is that now this window is clipped with this window because in fact there is some pixels of this window that are obscured right and now the thing is we don't have to render we uh, those uh, obscured pixels of of uh, brave's window okay uh, we don't have to care about them we don't care about their the pixels right there and if you really truly don't care about them then you set clip to true and that will actually save you a bit of performance uh, because you don't have to to uh, worry about those pixels and in fact if the whole screen is uh, you know obscured then well you're not going to process any pixels which is lovely uh, but the thing is sometimes you may want to read the swap chain like some use cases you may want to like read the swap chain image like uh, the pixels you want to read the pixels although the the image is obscured okay then you have to set clip to false but in our case and in most cases you can just set clip to true uh, for example let's say, for example bloom you may want to set clip to false because you know like you get the actual texture like the pixel data of the screen and stuff and you do some operations and and things like that but in any way let's let's not worry about that clip to true let's go Composite alpha. So composite alpha is also interesting. Now the thing is there is something called a compositor. It's related to the window manager. Now a compositor, the job of a compositor is that, you know, you have two windows, right? And now how are you going to display those two windows in the same, uh, you know, in the same screen, basically, in some sense, for example, let's say this window is actually transparent. Uh, so the job of the compositor is to actually make this window uh, like this transparent window look through so you can actually see the other window that's what a compositor is it compose you know like windows together uh, that's the, its job so but anyway in our case we don't have a you know a transparent window um, we only care like about the the color so let's just get, go with all alpha opaque bit Basically, I'm saying that I don't care about transparency. That's basically it. And in fact, the swap chain really goes ahead and, and interacts a lot with the, the window manager, the window compositor, etc. That's why we have to set all of these values. Uh, some platforms doesn't really care about such values, but you know, you're actually cross platform, so you got the point. Anyway, so what's next? We have set the surface, clip, key family, blah, 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 image array layers. This can be one. If you're, let's say, using stereoscopic rendering where you have like one image, but I mean, uh, now there is some glasses, you know, that there is two colors in the lens. Like for example, this red and this green or something like this red and this blue or something like that. And the thing is, in the screen, it's like, you know, there is two images being rendered in some sort of way, uh, interlaced pixels. I don't know how to describe exactly, but basically one eye sees one image layer and the other eye sees the second image layer. And so you have a more immersive experience somehow. Uh, but anyway, since uh, like not immersive experience, because in fact, when you have just one, one, uh, what can I say? When you just have one image, you know, like just, just like the screen, right? It's just flat. There's not a lot of depth information coming into your eyes, right? In fact, there is no depth information coming into your eyes. Uh, your mind just did use some, some depth information. Uh, but the real depth perception is not there since, you know, the screen is just flat. But there is some, 
there is some uh, those like those glasses for example which you see a different image depending on which eye okay and so you have two images being rendered so but anyway we don't care about that uh, most use cases use image area layers one all uh, right next up surface flags you may also maybe need it in VR. I'm not exactly sure to be honest, but because in fact you have, you know, like two two places where you actually see like you're rendering two things. But anyway, anyway, that just uh, we don't care. Image extent. Now for image extent, I cannot grab the information yet. I, I have to do some stuff before actually getting that information. Image color space two, image format two. I'm gonna do some stuff to actually get that. So image sharing mode is also interesting. Let's see, VK shared mode. So there's concurrent, there's exclusive, there's these two enums basically. Max enum, just don't care about it. Um, concurrent and exclusive. Now, if you were using two cues for presentation somehow, then you have to use concurrent, I think. Or no, in fact, I think if you want to share the swap chain in two cues, you have to use concurrent, but since we have only one queue, we're always going to go with exclusive, you know. Uh, so, and exclusive is equal to zero, and anything that equals to zero, you don't have to set it since we're already initializing uh, initializing that stuff up, okay. So, yeah, there you go. Nice stuff. Lovely. Image usage. Uh, right. Image usage. Let's see. VK, image, usage. All right, now there is multiple image usage, usages, right? It's an enum, as you can see here, lovely stuff. Now, this is the main ones, really. Uh, I think up to, well, somewhere around here. Let's just say uh, somewhere around here. These are only enabled if you enable beta extensions, basically. Or uh, We don't care about that, really. And there's these other ones, uh, which is interesting. But anyway, this is the the most interesting ones. So now the thing is, if you're gonna be using the transfer, like the swap chain images, um, and in fact, I didn't describe what is a swap chain images in the first place, really. So the thing is, let's. So you have a window, right? So let's say you, you are the painter, okay, and you have the, the canvas, right? Now the thing is if you draw as as the paint or as the painter or whatever you want to call as the artist, right? You're drawing into the canvas. If you're drawing in and, and the user is basically watching you, so he sees you know that you are drawing into the screen. Now seeing an artist draws is quite interesting, it's fun. But seeing a computer draws is not that fun, okay? Because in fact, basically, what you're gonna see for the window, if you see actually draw, is that there's just, you know, it, it draws line by line, which doesn't look so good. And since the screen is doing it really fast, you know, it just annoys you a lot. And that's basically called the screen tearing. Uh, screen tearing, let's go. Uh, let's see if I can find a beautiful image for that. There you go. As you can see, <laughs> notice this game. There is some screen turn here where like this is basically the old painting and then this is the new painting, right? And so basically, as you can see, the computer just keeps on drawing on top and just like this, uh, which is quite interesting, as you can see here. So screen tearing, there you go, another screen tearing. And all of these screen turns. So that's basically screen turn called. Now to actually meditate uh, and to control this screen turn, we have a swap chain. And we use some technique called double buffering or even triple buffering. Uh, uh, it's actually called in games, it's called VSync. Even in development, but anyway. So what is VSync? Uh, base actually no hold on so there's tr double buffering and there's also vsync but yeah uh, they're related somehow <laughs> I'll, I'll try to explain so when you have double buffering instead of seeing the painter directly painting no so let's say the painter have the canvas double-sided okay he can paint here 
and he keep, he can paint here, right? So he can paint on two sides. Now what the painter can do, let's say, let's say you are the user, right? Let's say you are the, let's say the gamer that is playing my game, for example, right? And I'm the painter, all right? So now what I can do is that I can, I can paint on my, on this side of my hand, right? And then I can show you that side and then I can paint on the other side and then show you the other side. Now what happens is that you won't see how I'm drawing and, and that's kind of nice, right? So you see the whole picture at once, at one time, which is lovely. And while, while I'm actually drawing another frame, another image, okay? So you keep on seeing that, that image that I drawn to you until I'm ready on drawing this image, then I can show you the other image. Now I can again draw it into this side and can show you and flip, 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 flip. <laughs> okay, so that's basically what is called double buffering, right? So this the computer draws into one image and presents the other image, okay? So this is the presented image you can see and this is the, the actual image that the computer is drawing on, for example, okay? So you never really see this screen tearing because you never see the actual computer going ahead and drawing each pixel, uh, on each line, basically, of the image, which is uh, annoying, okay? So that's basically it. When the computer is done with its job, it just shows you the other image. Now, there's also another thing which is called V-Sync. Now, each monitor have a refresh rate Okay, so for example, my monitor has 75 hertz in the, uh, in the refresh rate. And hertz, whenever you hear hertz, it's basically how much something happens in a second. And 75 hertz means that something is happening 75 times per second. Now, the refresh rate of a monitor, if it's 75 hertz, that means it can show 75 images per second, okay? Now, the thing is, each image takes some time to actually draw into the monitor, right? Now, the thing is, if we if we flip the buffer, if we flip the image at the, at the wrong time when the monitor is not ready, is drawing the other image, you happen to, to get that, that screen tearing thing, okay? That's why we actually wait for something called the vertical blank. The vertical blank. And what is the vertical blank? Now, let's... Uh, you know, like see my 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 mouse here, okay? Just have a look into my mouse here. So the c computer goes ahead and it's it draws each line like this. Of course, each line takes some time. Now, when when the computer is done, which means that the you know like the scan line is at the end of the screen, like it's done drawing the whole screen. What what that means is that then it reached the the vertical like the vertical blank line because at this point right now it, it's ready to actually draw another image it's going to go back to the top and start drawing another image basically and so vsync basically what it does it just makes sure to not flip the image until the monitor is ready okay until it's it's done presenting the image that we have gave it before and that's basically it i hope it, you got some points here I, I tried my best to explain it uh, but anyway so here now the thing is now we have something called an image in in vulcan an image is basically you know some some uh, what can I say? Some memory, right? So it's just, you know, a bunch of data that is useless. But the thing is, images are like... So there is two things. There is a buffer and there is an image in Vulkan, okay? A buffer is just a bunch of data and you're free to do whatever you want with that data. We don't care about what the how to interpret that data and or how it can what it contains or stuff like that okay now image is also kind of similar but it's it's usually linked you know with with the 2d buffer in some sense if that makes any sense and then there's also image format uh, image view which we're going to see later now what is an image view or even a buffer view buffer view but we usually only use image view now those views basically uh, tells 
Vulkan or specifies to Vulkan or you as the programmer, like um, how you're supposed to actually read that data. Because in fact, a buffer or an image is just a bunch of data. That's basically what it is in memory. But then you attach to it an image view and you use that image view to actually interpret that data somehow. For example, you could say that the first, uh, the first, uh, this section of memory is supposed to be a color, you know, and, and this is how the color is actually partitioned into a red, green, blue components and stuff like that. Uh, you know, something similar, like for example, the format of the image, right? And the thing is you could have similar, like several image views and each image view could, could take a portion of the screen of the, of the image. Okay. It could take, it could read or write to a portion of the image. Right. And also it could be a different format, uh, but yeah, hopefully that, that makes any sense. <laughs> VK image usage transfer SRC bit. Now this is the image usage flags. We basically tell the driver how we're intending to use this image so it can hopefully optimize things up and enable some things if that's the case. Okay, so here, transfer SRC. So SRC stands for source and transfer SRC means that this image, we're intending to use it as a, as a source. So for example, let's say you want to capture the, 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 the window, right? You want to capture a frame uh, from the swap chain. Okay. Or, or the window, we can think about it as the window. And then you want to save it, just save it into a PNG image file or something like that. Then you would want to actually uh, include this. Of course, you don't have to, you know, use only one usage flag. It, they're called flags because in fact, you can use a lot of them like at once, like multiple of them. Uh, but basically if you include this SRC, it means you, then you can actually read, the, you're basically telling the driver that you're intending to read the, the data of the swap chain image, basically. The DST, which stands for destination, you're telling the driver that you're intending to actually transfer some data from some image like let's say for example you loaded it from memory like in case of a texture um like for example you loaded the game's logo or something like that then you want to draw it into the swap chain that means you have to to use dst but in the case if you use transfer right if you use the transfer operation now there's also sample bit which we don't have to worry about now there's storage bit which you usually use with compute and there's the color attachment bit uh, the color attachment bit is basically you're telling um, the driver that you want to use this image uh, as a render target uh, of color to be exact, okay? So you basically want to render color into this image using a graphics pipeline, okay, of the GPU. There's also depth stencil attachment bit. Now, depth stencil is also interesting, but let's not go into it yet. But basically, it's just like an just like a normal image, but instead of holding the color, it's holding depth information. Like for example, if you have a three D world, which point is closer? Like for example, the, the closest point will be for example black, and the farthest point will be white. And you can use that depth information to actually you know draw something on top of the other or stuff like that but anyway we're gonna go into that later if we actually cover uh covered 3d rendering in the future uh but yeah there's also transient now transient is also interesting you usually use it if you want to use multi-sampling because in fact the viewport not viewport uh, uh what it's called the uh, the window the window what it's called uh, window frame buffer i think yeah window frame buffer so the window frame buffer in vulcan at least it doesn't support msaa all right so multi sampling which makes the jagged lines look so smooth in in, in the drawing okay uh, now that's not supported for the frame buffer window. Okay, you have to to actually implement it yourself in Vulkan, and you usually use transient 
for an intermediate image, an image where you don't really care about saving its data after you've done some operation with it. So like, for example, it's, it's like, you know, an intermediate image um, that you just use once for some operations and just you don't care about what it contains afterwards. But we usually use it for, as an intermediate for multi-sampling, for example, but in any way, we don't care. Input attachment bit. Now this is, uh, you have to include this if you want to, maybe to make this as an input for some kind of pipeline or something. I don't know exactly, but you got the point. Anyways, I actually spent a lot of time on that. But in any case though, here we are only interested in color attachment bit. Next up, let's see what we have. Flags, next, image color space image extent, image format, minimum image count. Now this is also really interesting. Minimum image count. Now, minimum image count. In fact, minimum image count, we have to first get some information before covering that one. Mm, what else? There's old swap chain. Now I can actually set this to the old swap chain. Uh, so for example, you can say this is the new swap chain, all right? So a new, Oh, we can do this. Um, oh, oh yeah, I see, see. So the thing is, hmm. Oh yeah, fine. So the thing is, let's say this is the swap chain. So vacay swap chain create, uh, not swap, uh, swap chain, KHR. This is basically an intermediate variable swap chain, right? And then instead of putting it directly into the state swap chain, I can actually put it into the swap chain directly, right? And then I can say the old swap chain is equal to state swap chain, which is basically the current swap chain. If there is any, of course, if there is none, well, it's going to be null, which is just perfect. Basically, we're saying that there is no old swap chain. So either way, it's fine. So state swap chain. Now, after doing that, what you can say, you can free, hopefully you can free the old swap chain. I'm, I may be, I maybe have some, not exactly sure about this information of reusing, uh, you know, swap chains since I've seen a lot of controversies about it. But for now, this is what I think, how I think it, it works. If there is any problem, the validation layers will tell us hopefully, or we're going to see some strange artifacts or something. But anyways, so we're going to free the current swap chain after of course, after creating the, the, the new swap chain, we're going to free the old one, I think, unless maybe if, uh, if it's doing it itself, but in it, actually, hold on a sec. What? Uh, no, actually not a free, but VK destroy swap chain, swap chain KHR. And then we're basically going to go ahead and say state device comma. Uh, now let's actually go ahead and uh, destroy the current swap chain basically and then let's pass in the allocator there you go now we can actually go ahead and say state swap chain and now after destroying the old one we can actually pass in the new one and there you go lovely stuff that's why I needed this intermediate variable uh, but yeah all right so lovely um, that's hopefully how it's used. And we actually reference the old swap chains, so we don't have to recreate the swap chain from the start. Basically, you're telling the driver that you can hopefully reuse that one. Maybe, not exactly sure to be honest about old swap chain, but anyways, um, you may want to do some more research about it. Uh, for pre-transform and present mode. Present mode, I need some information before doing that. And pre-transform, uh, the same thing kind of, but it, we don't really care about pre-transform. I'm going to show you what's, what it's all about. So vacate transform. Is it surface transform? No. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me make sure it's vacate surface transform. There we go. Vacate surface transform. And basically, uh, basically, basically now the thing is, at least for me here in, or I think in most, if not all desktop application, uh, like platforms, if you go here to, mm, I don't remember, Surface, right, exactly. Surface, if you go to there, 
there is actually supported transforms. And in this case, I only have identity bit. And identity means that we we don't need any transform, right? We're just gonna take the image as it is, right? Um, but in fact, when I run the Vulkan Hardware Capability Viewer uh, in my phone, I found out there there is some other transforms like like you know rotate ninety degrees, non, uh, rotate one hundred eighty degrees, etc. I'm not sure to be honest. There is I didn't find any meaningful information about it. But bas basically, I think from my finding, I think that let's say if you are on an on a phone, for example, you can say, of course, if it supports it, maybe you can say transform, rotate 180 bit or 90 bits. So, you know, when, you, when, the, when the user actually changes the orientation or something, I don't know, to be honest, but either way, we don't really care about it. Uh, let's just say transform identity. And, and if I'm not mistaken, it's probably zero. No, it's not zero. So I have to actually give it Okay, interesting. So that's the pre-transform basically. So now what's what's the other stuff we need some information before we can get it. Okay? So let's actually grab those information. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, I need the surface capabilities. I need to actually query such information capabilities. Let's go. I'm gonna call it capabilities. There you go. Now let's see. Surface capable. Well, function of course. VK. Maybe enumerate capabilities or something. Let's see. VK capabilities. There we go. Gates physical device surface capabilities. Make sure to select KHR because there's also other extensions are available. Make sure to se to select this one or to use that one. Okay. Now state physical device there you go and then state we're gonna pass in the surface and then we can have the capabilities mm -hmm. I can pass in a reference to our capabilities variable so we can go ahead and put the capabilities here in that variable all right lovely uh, is would that fail yeah it can fail so let's actually say panic but before actually using that macro, I've got some feedback that panic is not so, I didn't name it so, you know, like uh, in a meaningful way, right? So the thing is, when you say panic, you expect it to just panic without any condition, just, you know, exit the program without any condition at all. So we're going to add something better. I'm going to refactor this. And I'm going to use panic if. I'm gonna call it panic if you can call it whatever you want or just leave it as it was but i think this makes more sense panic if i just used my ide to refactor that name but yeah panic if you know stuff like that lovely stuff all right nice so yeah all right where we was where we was where we was yo i'm getting <laughs> getting lost all right let's go uh, swap chain, swap chain, swap chain. Okay, let's actually use Vic, uh, panic F here. Panic F, VK, get swap chain. Surface capabilities. Failed to get surface capabilities. And let's go. Nice. Now that's what. Let's go. There you go. Nice stuff. Now, hopefully we got the capabilities. Next up, I also want a, a VK. Hold on, let me see what capabilities hold. Yep, it holds some information that we need. It holds the extent, current extent. It holds the current transform and the max image array layers, max image array layers. There you go. Minimum image, maximum image count, maximum image extent, minimum image count, minimum image minimum image extent supported composite alpha supported composite alpha supported transforms and supported usage flags you can actually go ahead and use these things but let's actually go ahead and try to use those then so for image array layers instead of hard coding it i'm just gonna take it from the capabilities directly so array layers max image array layers i think yep 
and the, the other one is alt i'm just going to assume that the swap chain supports this vk image usage but you can actually check it from the capabilities itself um but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to assume that is uh, available uh pre-transform instead of just setting this i'm just going to set it to the current transform of the window or whatever also the extent image extent i can just set it to the current extent too so capabilities dot current extent there you go okay and what else image array layers composite alpha clipped image format now we need the formats and we also need the present modes or the present mode uh, okay all right you can also by the way if you want to uh, let's say you can also take into account the capabilities dot minimum extent you know minimum image extent and maximum ex image extent because you don't have uh, you cannot actually set it to something that is below minimum image extent or at a maximum after like more than maximum image extent um and by the way, this current extent and minimum image extent and maximum image extent really depends on the window. Uh, for example, in my case, X11 and Linux. Uh, so minimum image extent for this specific window. There you go. This is it and this is it. It's actually equal. But in fact, it could be different. In Wayland, for example, you probably have maximum image extent maybe set to i don't know a really big value i'm not sure but and minimum image extent is zero or something like that also in android phones i remember uh so yeah you could have something like that but in my case i'm not gonna bother I'm just gonna say current extent current transform there you go um key family index count there you go nice stuff clipped mm -hmm. now i think i need the the uh, formats so let's get the formats give vk image format format properties of course uh, let's get the formats right uh, should we call it format properties though yeah sure let's go ahead and do that anyways image properties all right nice now let's say vk get physical device i think image properties there we go image format properties you pass in of course the physical device and if you notice that here we actually pass in the physical device and on the other one for surface capabilities we pass in the physical device in the surface because in fact it gives you the capabilities and the formats available to that specific surface at, at this point in time okay for example even the width and the height of the of the window could be uh, is probably you know made into account here and it's also making into account the physical device capabilities okay if if the physical device is able to to use such a thing or not such a format for example but anyways so vk format here hmm. what do you mean by vk image format though no i probably got it wrong though hold on vk in, probably enumerate maybe uh, let's see. I actually probably got something wrong. VK image properties. Now the thing is, what thing that gives me this? I can just search. It's being used here. There we go. Get physical device image format properties. Is it? Hold on, let me see the other ones. You pass in the image type, the usage flags, the grave. Now that's crazy. Actually, no. <laughs> surface format, sorry. AK surface format, I think. Yep, exactly. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know how I actually forgot about that. Anyways, VK get physical device, surface formats. There you go, formats KHR. This is an extension, and then state physical device. There we go. State surface. There we go. 
and the surface format count you can give me the count here uh, let's say surface format count okay or we can just say format count uh-huh we should pass in a reference by the way so we can put it there basically and now hopefully i can say null here uh, since I only need to, I want to read the format count. I want to know how much is the format count. You enter it to T format count. Let's go. That's basically the format count. Interesting. Now afterwards, I need to allocate some memory where I can fit all those formats because in fact, this, uh, this function will actually give me an array in some sort, like a list of, of elements. Um, but the more technical word is an array, but anyways, um, okay, so let's see what we can do. VK surface format KHR. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, a pointer since it's an array. And we use pointers because basically we're pointing to the start of the array. And that's why you always need the count uh, to be known because the, er the pointer itself doesn't really tell you how much elements there is. It just points to the first element and then you have from... And you just have to make sure to not go upward the count of the ar array, basically, anyways. Make a surface format, KHR formats, let's go. Uh, but we already have made it, right? Yep, we already have made it. In fact, let's just put it here. Let's make sure there is a pointer there. And now I'm just going to copy. By the way, let's make sure to panic, maybe. Yeah, panic. Let's try to panic, panic if. There you go couldn't get surface formats there you go and we don't need the semicolons here here okay nice all right now i'm just going to copy this line because it's actually the same it's just a slight different uh, here instead of null now you can actually pass in the formats so we can it can give you that and of course uh hmm, what's happening here though is it initialized when used here hmm what take a surface format khr uh do i have to pass in a reference or something no but I don't care about initializing that. It, it's the one. Oh, oh yeah. I have to actually initialize it. Uh, but so how? Well, malloc. I'm going to basically give it some memory. I'm going to allocate some memory for that. I'm going to prepare some memory if you want if you want it that way. So format count, right? Times size of uh, VK surface format KHR. Okay. Because in fact, malloc takes size in bytes and size of function gives you the size of that specific type of element. And then you give it how much elements there is. And there you go, you get how much bytes you need for the whole array. Okay, interesting stuff. Let's make sure that uh, allocation have succeeded. So formats, hmm, not, uh, or basically if, if not formats, I think then that means that we couldn't allocate. Couldn't al Oh my God, what's happening here? Couldn't allocate memory. Let's go. Now, if we run this up, uh, it seems fine, okay. Couldn't allocate memory. And I believe that's pretty much it and of course let's make sure to free the those formats but i'm gonna free them until the end i guess free surface formats or formats there you go and now i got that out of the way now hopefully and now i need to actually select a format okay so i need to select a format and in fact i can probably free it much Mm, even before, like after selecting the the thing that I need, 
I can free the array. So let's actually free it here. And here I'm going to select our format. So uh, VK surface format KHR format. It's going to be initialized. But then I'm going to make a for loop uh, where I'm going to go up to format count. That's the size of the array. And then basically I'm going to grab or I'm just going to check if formats I dot. So there is color space and there is format. Now the thing is you can just select the first color space in the first format you get. But I would prefer some things if they exist. Now, in fact, if we come here, you can see in my case, I have two surface formats. Okay. I have the first one, which is format unorm. Uh, unorm. And this is the color space, nonlinear KHR, sRGB. And the second one is sRGB nonlinear and BGRA8 sRGB. Now, I would prefer this one. BGRA8 is RGB. This is basically the best one and the most common one. So if it exists, I'm going to go with it. And the same thing with this color space, it's RGB nonlinear KHR. Uh, in this case, there's no difference between this one and this one. Um, but yeah, otherwise, we're just going to select this first surface format if it's not found in any device. Okay. So yeah, the color space, if it's equal to VK, color space is RGB nonlinear KHR. Uh, and format dot format is equal to oh format i dot format right equal to um let's see let's make sure that this is hmm, actually. I'm just going to have it as format index, basically, I guess. Hmm. UN32T, right? Yep, exactly. That's what I'm going to do. UN32T, format index. So if format stuff format. In fact, I'm just going to say here, VK surface format, KHR format is equal to actually uh, formats I, index of I. Okay, now I can just use format instead of that thing. Okay. If if the format is equal to VK format uh, BG B8 G8 and 8 by the way means that we have to store it in 8 bits. Uh, and B G R A B is blue, G is green, R is red, A is alpha. Alpha is for opacity, transparency, and stuff like that. Um, and of course, there's multiple. There's SN, there's S norm, SRGB, S scale, U N T U norm, U scale, blah, blah, blah. There's all these crazy things. Now you don't have to know all these stuff for now. Uh, for now, let's just go with SRGB. And by the way, the blue, the red, the red and the green, and the alpha are called components. Okay. And 8, 8, 8, 8. It's like if you add them together, you have 32 bits. And that's basically the depth of the color is called. And red, green, and blue is are actually the essential colors. So you can actually mix them together. Uh, and then you can get any color you would like. As long as, of course, you only have a limited amount of colors. Since, you know, you can only store as much as 8 bits for blue, for example, or green or red. And uh, 8 bits allows you to store up to 255, from 0 to 255, or basically 256 uh, levels of light. Okay, so yeah, sRGB. Let's go with sRGB. And there you go. Now, the thing is, sRGB is better than the other ones uh, because it basically results in, in a much nicer, uh, like perceived colors for the human eye uh, and it's another topic by its own but you just have to know this this fact this advantage and that's it for now at least uh, but yeah and now if we find it now we got to say format index is equal to i okay otherwise if we don't find it well 
we're just going to go, the default is going to be zero, basically. And that's basically it, I think. Free formats, but here I should actually make sure to vacate service format, KHR format is equal to um, formats I, I think. Uh, I mean, format index. Okay, let's go. And by the way, here, if when we find that the first one that we're going to find, we're going to break. That's it. Done. Uh, we don't need to check the other formats. Okay, of course, we have to re after we get our uh, chosen format. And that's pretty much it, hopefully. So we got a format. Now we also have to do the same thing for the present mode. Uh, it's so, so similar, but now let's actually ex get those format stuff. So image format is equal to format dot format and dot image. Uh, let's see image extend. I already done it. I think color space. Now I need the color space format dot color space. Now we have filled these informations. Now I think the one that is still not done is present mode. Now, I we could we could if you if you don't want to, you could just go with present mode FIFO KHR. Now there is a lot of present modes, and each mode is works in some sense like it's a different mechanism of presenting into the screen. Um, but it's kind of hard to explain just using you know, like just talking. I may f I may put some links to some uh, cool resources down below, which uses animation to explain these present modes. I may actually link to that uh, because I or actually watched a really cool video that you would you may find really interesting. Uh, but anyway, so we have present mode FIFO FIFO relaxed immediate mailbox. Now, in my opinion, in my opinion, ne first of all, never use immediate because you're gonna gonna get like screen tearing everywhere. Uh, every frame, right? Um, mailbox, in my opinion, is the best as long as you're on desktop. And, and if you're on mobile, you should not care about uh, uh, power because, in fact, mailbox really uh, drain the power of the battery uh, since it keeps on creating new frames if it's possible. And also, if you, if the system actually supports mailbox in the first place, yeah, for example, in my case, in Nvidia Linux, Linux to be exact, because in Windows it is supported. the uh, the uh, The driver in Windows supports mailbox for Nvidia, but in my case, in Linux, it doesn't. As you can see, I only have FIFO, FIFO Relax, Immediate. Now the API, the Vulkan API, only guarantees that FIFO exists. Uh, you can always assume that FIFO exists and we can just say go ahead and just say vacay, uh, vacay present mode FIFO and you're done. Okay, you don't have to do anything crazy. Now let's actually go back to the other ones so I can tell you much more about it. Present mode. Okay, so if you can use mailbox, use it. It's really nice. It's the best pretty much, I at least in my opinion. Okay, there's also FIFO Relax and there's FIFO. Um, there's also some other ones which you can probably get using extensions, but we don't care about those maybe. For example, in my Android phone, there is some other crazy present modes that I don't even know what, what our day are all about, but this is basically the standards. Uh, but anyway, FIFO KHR and FIFO Relaxed KHR. Okay, FIFO KHR, FIFO Relaxed KHR. Mm -hmm. Now, basically, FIFA Relaxed is is really similar to FIFA. Now, FIFA, it makes sure that you won't get any screen tearing at all, okay? Now, FIFA Relaxed, it's the same thing as FIFA, okay? But it gives you, it, it's much faster. It, it gives you more frames, basically. Uh, but at the cost of... And it also less, less latency, but at the cost of that, sometimes you may get some screen tearing. Sometimes, like occasionally, from time to time, you get some screen tearing, depending on the work you are doing uh, using the GPU and how strong is the GPU, etc. But to be honest with you, 
I'm going to go ahead and see if the present mode mailbox exists. If it does, I'm going to use it. Otherwise, I'm just going to use fit forward KHR. And that's basically it. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and say present mode. Okay. And now let's actually, let's see. Format. Uh -huh. let's, let's go ahead and do this here. All right. So vacay uh, present mode. KHR. Okay. Now this is the present mode that we need. All right, lovely stuff. So, uh, it's gonna equal uh, to FIFO if we couldn't find the the, uh, the mailbox thing, right? Uh, otherwise, we're gonna actually go ahead and panic if. Uh, but let's actually get the present modes first. There we go. Get physical device surface present modes KHR. Now here you're gonna pass in the state physical device, that's for sure. Then the state um, surface, then the present mode count. Uh, well, this is the information that we need, first of all, how much present modes are available. And that's why I'm gonna say present mode count. Um, basically gonna give it the address so it can give me that information. I, I'm in need of that information. That's why I said null, because in fact, if this is null, then it's basically gonna go ahead and look up for me the count. Otherwise, if it's something, then it's gonna put that data, that those present modes into the array pointed by that pointer that I gave it, but it also going to head and read instead of write into present mode count. So it doesn't have to fetch the, the, the count again. It can just use the one that I, it gave me before. But anyway, so present mode count, you enter it to T. Let's go. Present mode count. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, now I'm not going to initialize it since I, this one going to initialize it. And I think it's good. Yeah, it does give us a vacate result, so it can fail. Although, um, I don't think it's quite common that it would fail, but I mean, you have to do it, especially in the tutorial, right? You have to do. And the thing is, even in not, not in the tutorial, you may have some weird hardware or weird system or something like that, or, or weird circumstances or something that can just, you know, make something fail that you would assume won't fail. And then something won't work. And then you have no clue what's happened. <laughs> so yeah. That's why I'm just making sure I'm to put errors. So failed uh, or couldn't would just be consistent with our error messages. So couldn't get uh, surface present modes count to be exact, right? Um, hmm. All right. Now, next up, we actually need again to map to allocate enough memory, just like we did here, right? Uh, all right, let's go ahead and do that. Couldn't get service, blah, 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 blah. Now instead of formats, let's go with present modes. Let's call it present modes. And here you have actually uh, VK present mode KHR, of course, uh, pointer since it's an array. And here I'm allocating, I'm allocating, <laughs> memory allocation basically. So format count time size of, of course, VK present mode. We can we can actually create a, a macro for this, by the way. But let's just keep the code clean for now. Um, panic if present modes. There you go. Instead of couldn't allocate memory. Well, it is it couldn't allocate memory. And by the way, to be exact, maybe let's say here could it allocate formats memory, and here couldn't allocate present modes memory. Mm-hmm, nice stuff. All right, and let's make sure to free this this craziness, right? Uh, where did we free that thing? Yeah, we're gonna free it. Yeah, we freed it actually before, so that's nice. Free. Uh, I would actually like to, to keep the freeze on the same page, right? So free formats and also free in fact, let's reformat last and let's also free present modes. Okay, nice stuff. All right. So before we actually free those things, we have to actually select a present mode. 
Now, by default, it would be FIFO, but I'm actually going to do a similar thing to this guy to select the, that thing. So, VK present mode, KHR present mode. Mm -hmm. I can probably even create a function for this, but for now, I'll just keep it simple. Uh, present mode. Oh. Okay, let's actually call this in index maybe. No, you don't need to say index. Um, okay, let's let's call this mode. Let's call this mode. Uh, present modes and I of course. Now, if mode is equal to VK mailbox present mode mailbox, of course. Then we're going to say, instead of format index, of course, we're going to say uh, present mode index, I think. Actually, how did I even did this? Uh, anyways, anyways, we'll just create a enter the 2 t present mode index. Let's go and present mode index. All right. Okay. Let's say equal to you enter the two max. There you go. Now, if present mode index equal to you enter the two max, then we're basically just gonna actually, if it's not equal to you enter the two max, then we're gonna set the present mode to uh, the present modes i or basically present mode index. All right. So if we found the present mode index, like if we found that mail mode mailbox thing, then sure, uh, we're going to set it. Otherwise, we're just going to leave it as zero, uh, as a mode key, FIFO KHR. Okay, nice stuff. All right, I think that's pretty much it. And now... Uh, did I actually include also image count or something like that? It's called uh, minimum image count. There we go. I didn't actually include it, right? Yep, probably not. So surface capabilities, I can find it in capabilities. Minimum image count. There you go. Um, and for mailbox, at least, it's it's good if you add one into the minimum image count it would uh, allow you to not, it will allow it to not block when there is, n like when the image is still getting presented. So you'd better add a one, that would be nice. Uh, but you don't have to do it uh, really. But we should also, since we're adding one, let's make sure that it's indeed in the bounce because there is a maximum image count and minimum image count. And to actually do that, well, we have to clamp. Uh, and how we can, let's actually do a clamp here. So let's say you enter the 2T clamp. You get to you enter the 2T value. And you get to you enter the 2T minimum. And you enter the 2T max. Oh man, that's a lot of you enter the 2Ts. <laughs> okay. So if value is less than minimum, then, well, we're going to return value. Else if value is greater than maximum. Actually, hold on a sec. No, if value is less than minimum, we're going to return minimum. Because that means that the value is, well, less than minimum, which is not possible. So we can just return the, the closest possible in the bounce, which is basically minimum. Logically, at least, if value is greater than max, return max. Otherwise, 
well, just return. And instead of else, since we don't have anything to do other than that, we're just going to return value. And there you go. Now that's the clamp function. Now I can actually use it here. So clamp, what the value is, is this, the, the basically how much images we have, we want. And by the way, this minimum image count thing is basically how much buffers you want. Uh, for example, the example that I gave you is like two, two images basically. So you have this image and then this image basically. Um, uh, but invoking is kind of weird, right? It's all open source and stuff. I just advise you to stick with minimum image count plus one. Of course, if it's possible. And how we can check if it's possible, we're going to use this clamp function that I just made. We're just going to make sure that it is indeed indeed between the minimum image count and the maximum image count. Now, the thing is, since I'm saying plus one and I'm basing it on minimum image count, then I don't really have to use clamp. I can just use minimum or something like that. Yeah, that is true. So I don't really need clamp, but maybe I can put it into use later on. Like for example, maybe in current extent or something like that, but yeah. But just for the sake of the comp completeness though, let's just do that anyways. Com capability, so the minimum is capabilities dot minimum image count. And now here you can actually set it, for example, if you want triple buffering, then you can say three. If you want double buffering, then you can say two. Let's just go with three, like th triple buffering. So, uh, fine. Okay, capabilities dot minimum image count. Now capabilities dot maximum image count. Now, the thing is about maximum image counts is kind of special because in fact, if there is no maximum or at least the maximum is not reported uh, by the driver, then what happens is that basically the maximum is not there. So you have to, to do something about it. So the thing is, if there is a maximum, if it's not zero, then well, we're just going to use uh, that value. Otherwise, we're going to say you enter the two T max, which is basically the maximum value you can ever put there, which basically means in that sense, loosely means that it is infinite, inbounded at least, not infinite, but anyways. Uh, too many arguments function call expected three have, hmm. Uh, oh yeah, so let's actually remove this. So you could either use this minimum image count plus one, you know, or you could use uh, like just say three for triple buffering or two for double buffering. It's up to you. Let's use triple buffering. Fine. Let's go with the, and do that. Capabilities. Dot, so basically three, the values three is probably the best for mailbox, the triple buffering. But anyway, mm -hmm. capabilities. So this, by the way, this ternary operator basically means if, if this doesn't equal to zero, then we're going to basically use it. Otherwise, if it's not zero else, if that condition is false, then well, we can use the N32 max. All right, nice stuff. And that's basically it. We can do the same thing with current extent, for example, maybe. But it is VK extent 2D, so it's kind of, I have to create another function. So there's no need, no need. Okay. Or we could say something like this, um, VK extent. How do you do that? Oh. Huh? Image extent, what type? VK extent to the, but why it didn't show up there? Crazy stuff. Oh yeah, because I have to do it this way if I want that. All right. And so you can say dot width is equal to uh, clamp The value is, uh, in this case, we're just going to say current extent. So, um, capabilities, I think, yeah, current extent dot width. The minimum is capabilities dot current ex dot, uh, uh, let's see, um, dot maximum extent, image extent dot width. Actually, minimum there. Okay, let's use the minimum. 
I'm not sure if it could be zero for the maximum, but I'm just gonna go with that. And you gotta do the same thing for the height. Just copy this, you know, and do all that crazy stuff. Uh, but for now, you know what? I'm just gonna go with the current extent. Capabilities, the current extent. Um, I think, I think at least, I think that the current extent will always be in the balance of between minimum and maximum, but who knows, Vulcan is kind of weird, but anyway. Um, so I think that's pretty much it, really. Hopefully. Um, state swap chain. And the thing is, you have to recreate the swap chain whenever the window gets resized. Uh, but yeah, create swap chain. And also, let's make sure to destroy the swap chain, though. Uh, destroy the swap chain. So how do you destroy the swap chain, though? VK destroy swap chain state uh, device state swap chain p allocator state allocator all right so i think that's nice 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 do I missed any errors or something like that? Like some error handling? Yep, I missed the swap chain itself. Panic F. Let's go. There's a lot of things you can miss. Um, couldn't create swap chain. Hopefully I can. <laughs> um, so yeah. I don't need the semicolon in this case. Mm-hmm. Okay, panic if, panic if. I don't need these semicolons. So some using panic f. Same thing here. And so yeah. Alright. Um let's actually try to run this. It seems fine. But let's actually run the vk config so if there's any validation stuff you're gonna tell me let's go with the standard preset validation okay now let's actually try to run seems all good all right it didn't actually tell us anything wrong for example let's let's just make sure it is actually checking so for example uh let's say hmm let's say for example this is no and see what it's going to do. Well, it didn't actually tell us anything. Um, crazy stuff. Okay, did, are we even creating a swap chain? Yeah, we are. Yep, this whole crazy stuff. Interesting. Well, we just got to trust it for now. <laughs> we just got to trust it. Um... Maybe I can try to change something else. For example, maybe this one. Let's say for the, if you say zero here, would it actually complain? There we go. It actually complained and in fact it didn't couldn't even create the swap chain. <laughs> Let's go. All right, nice. So it have to be at least one for the image array layers. Uh, all right. Hold on a sec. What am I doing here? I'm actually using maximum image area layers. What? <laughs> no. No, no, no. Let's go with the minimum image layers, I think. Or in fact, let's just go with one here. Really? Oh my god, what am I doing there? Oh my god. Um, but hold on. Let's see capabilities. Maybe current... Let's see where is image layers. No, there's just maximum. Let's just go with one here, though. I, I'm glad I actually um, noticed that. But anyway. So now after actually creating the swap chain, you have to create the, the thing is the swap chain is responsible to actually create the images that you're gonna use. It's the one that is responsible to allocate memory for the images, et cetera, and to manage them, to manage the mechanism of presentation and stuff like that. It's basically managed for you f by the OS and the driver, you know, there's a corporation there. <laughs> uh, so we don't have to care about that stuff. Uh, but basically, 
Now the thing is, yes, we do have the images of the swap chain, but we don't know how to interpret those images. Uh, those images are just memory chunks currently. So we have to actually wrap them into a image, image, uh, image views so we can actually use them in our pipeline, in reading from them, in writing to them, etc. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's go. Let's go. So, um, do we already have how much images we need? Yes or no? I think, yeah, there we go, minimum. But this, but this is just the minimum because in fact, although you say, for example, three, the, at least, uh, the API doesn't really force the, the window manager and stuff like that. It doesn't force them to, to actually create three, as I said, no, it can be anything other than three. It can be even four or five, who knows? Like it's the one that decides how much I just tell it how much is the minimum. Okay. So I have to actually get how much images are there somehow. Uh, VK swap chain. Uh, let's see where we can get that. VK get, there we go. VK get swap chain images KHR. You give it the device. And then you give it the swap chain, which we already have. And you give it the P swap image count. Now here it actually gives you that, that uh, information. Uh, let's just say image count. Then here I'm just going to say no, just as before, uh, you know, I think at this point in time, uh, you have to know this by heart. I don't have to explain it. So image count, there you go. And I think this can, yep, exactly. I have to add a panic F again, comma, and Comma um, couldn't uh, get swap chain images. There we go. Next up, we have to allocate enough memory for the array. So yeah, how are we gonna do that? Well, same thing. VK. But in fact, we don't we, we don't have to allocate memory for these images. But we have to allocate memory for the Hmm. Yeah, so the thing is here. Bruh, what? Can I print if image count, by the way? First of all, let's, let's just see what's happening there. So let's see. I image count. Let's see what it's going to select. I would think it's going to select three as we expect. There we go. Three, as you can see, which is nice. Um. But what if I said actually something here other than null? I don't know. Uh, let's just say maybe void. No, not void. I cannot do that. <laughs> um, well, let's just create a VK images. Okay, so let's store them. Uh, state, of course, a reference to state dot swap chain images. And we don't have to Actually, we do have to, uh, yeah, we do have to allocate. No, we don't have to allocate the array. We don't have to allocate the images, but we do have to allocate the array that will hold those uh, references to those images or those image handles. So here, let's just say null. We have to do all that crazy stuff for images and for view image views. Uh, crazy, but yeah. Now, mm, one thing that I would love to know is which one is bigger? Is it image view or image? That's interesting. Uh, VK image. Let's see one thing. But the thing is, both are pointers, right? VK image view. Huh. VK image. Yeah, both are non dispatchable handles, or whatever they're called. Yeah, both they're pointers. Interesting. I mean, let me let me just make sure one sec, one thing, right? Hold on, let me just make sure one thing. 
just to, you know, <laughs> make exactly sure because I have a little idea here. Okay, and uh, I probably cannot use this. I probably have to use ZU because it's size T. Uh, since I'm going to use size of uh, uh, function, BK image view, and then size of BK image. But it doesn't really matter since I have to allocate that memory twice anyways. Oh my god. Yep, that's true. Or do you? I mean, if I need access to the images, yeah, but either way, I, I, I may need the access to the, those images. So I'm oh, just going to do it anyways. Uh, but let's just see one thing right here. As you can see, both are eight because both are pointers, all right? And pointer to whatever type is, well, pointer. <laughs> um, so yeah. So I can actually, if I didn't need the images to store the images arrays, then I can just, you know, do both at the same time in the same array, but well, I have to. Anyway, uh, malloc. Now we have to use actually malloc, vk image. Or in fact, not vk image. I'm just going to say uh, state swap chain images, I think. Yeah. Or is it? Swap chain images. Yes, equal to malloc. Okay, malloc size. Well, the size is image count times, I can say just eight or actually size of, you know, size of size T, I think, or, or size of a pointer. But anyway, let's just say, let's just say, yeah, in fact, it should be size of a pointer. Oh, interesting. Let's just say size of VK image, right? Let's just go ahead and do that image. All right, since it is a pointer anyways. All right, let's create this new field. There we go. Uh, but why void, bro? Uh, it, it needs to be VK image. There you go. Swap chain images. We also need another one since we're still here. Image view. Since I have to actually take a plane to actually travel to the other section of the code on this mon monolithic file. But anyway, swap chain image count uh, or image views to be exact. Yeah, there we go. Swap chain image views. But we also need to store how much how much there is. So I don't need to store the count of both since I know that the count of both is the same, but you got the point. So VK actually, actually not VK, UN32T swap chain images count. Swap chain image count. Okay, swap chain image count. I'm um, actually, I like to put the, those numbers here in their own section. And there you go, swap chain image views. Hmm. Now we have those things. So now what? Now what? All right, let's go fly into that place. There you go. Uh, state swap chain images malloc image count times size of VK image. Now for instead of doing this though, I'm just gonna say state image swap chain images count. Image count, swap chain image count. There you go. Uh, right, nice stuff. Going to get swap chain, by the way, images count. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing here. And there you go. Now we got the swap chain images, hopefully at this point. But we still didn't fill it. We just reserved memory for it. But we have to fill it. And how we do that? Well, we just pass a reference to that variable that is inside the state. Reference, boom, troll V, subchain images. Now, oh, I don't need to actually because it's already a pointer anyways. And here couldn't get swap chain images. There you go. Okay. 
Now, kind of similar thing for the for the image views. Um, so I'm just gonna reserve memory. But of course, I don't have a function for Vulkan to actually get those image views. I have to generate them using the for loop, and you'll see how it goes. So size of VK image. Now here it's uh, it's actually a VK image view, and here let's say image views. Mm -hmm. We allocated memory for that, and of course the count is the same. That's why I didn't call some other crazy function. So, yeah. And by the way, let's make sure that this this stuff is getting allocated. Oh man, I don't want some crazy uh, not state. Uh, you know, like surprises right now. Swap chain images. There you go. The error is, well, couldn't mm -hmm, get swap chain uh, images. Or, yeah, images. Or actually couldn't allocate memory. Couldn't allocate memory here. Yeah into allocate memory for swap chain images. Let's go. Same thing for the other one, since we're using malloc once again. And since we're using malloc, we have to use also free. <laughs> and since we're willing to reuse this function, I actually have to check for, I actually almost forgot, <laughs> but yeah. Couldn't allocate memory for swap chain image views. Let's make sure it's the right variable. And that's it. That's it. Now we have to actually use the for loop, i, uh, the state swap chain count, spow, right? Image count, there you go. Nice. Now let's create vk create image, image view. You pass in the device. You pass in a create info, uh, image view, create info. There you go. Boom. Um, then we have VK allocation callbacks, which we get a set to state. Mm -hmm. Okay. So state, uh, allocator. There you go. The next step is VK image view. Now you have to give it the location, the address where to put the image view. Um, and the address to where to put the image view is, of course, address of state swap chain, spot chain, right? <laughs> swap chain image views. And of course, let's take the index operator and we're gonna store it in the index I on the, of the array. And there you go. That's why we need this uh, loop, this crazy loop. Okay, now what we can do here, we can we have to set the format. You can set it to another format other than the image, uh, swap chain image format, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say, you know, format, why bother? Format or format dot, by the way, let's make sure to, to set the S type. Oh my God, S type equal to VK image, uh, not image, uh, yeah, image view, create info. There we go. So I got the format out of the way. Next up is the actual image. And the image is actually a state swap chain images i. Not swap chain images views, image views, but images, okay? Because here you have to, to pass in basically the image that that this image view is, is using. Uh, but yeah, anyways, sub resource range, view type, components. Components is also interesting indeed. So if you say components, you can say it's basically a struct, right? Yeah, Vicky component mapping. Uh, yeah, Vicky component mapping. Don't need to pass a uh, reference here, which is interesting. So here you have RGBA, basically all the components that you can use, right? 
Now for what you can use this for basically, since again, this is an image view, you tell it, you know, exactly how to, to read the image. Now what you could do is for this image view, for example, you could map red to become green. For example, let's say you have an image, right? And then you want to use the, the red lights as the green lights or something like that. Then you may do something like this, the R equal to VK components, swizzle, let's say, uh, green or something like that. You basically remap R red to green or something like that. Okay. But in my case, I just want to say VK component identity, uh, swizzle identity. There you go. Which basically means I don't want to change its type, you know, just keep it as it is. And you're going to notice that it's actually equal to zero. There you go. So I don't have to actually set it. But in fact, normally you would do this, basically. You're going to have G, B, and A. You don't need this type. I don't know why my IDE had a date. But since these are all zeros and I'm using the initializer, I can just, you know, get rid of them. They're optional. So yeah, and hopefully the validation layer don't yell at me currently. So yeah. Mm hmm. They can create image view. And of course, that's, that's probably can fail. Yep, it can. Nice. Panic if. Couldn't create image views view view and here since i'm using that format and that uh, you know uh, like that uh, macro gymnastics i could just say this i can actually add the format and i can actually tell it which index which image i don't think it's so useful but i mean you you can do it so we, let's do it <laughs> there you go i just said that i want to to replace this with an integer. And I told it what integer is that, what value. And there you go, lovely. So, 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 so. Okay, in fact, thinking about it, probably panic if failed is much nicer maybe, or I don't know, to be honest. Uh, you know, I'll just keep it as panic if. Because in fact, results as equal to zero, yeah. I mean, yeah, sure, I guess. Panic if not. But uh, then it won't work out so well with the... Hmm. I don't know what to say about that. Let's maybe, instead of panic if, maybe we can call it expect or something like that. Expect. Expect. Yeah, I think so. That would be nicer, maybe. Okay, I mean, if I try to refactor here, rename panic F instead of panic F, let's say expect. Okay, and there you go. There you go. And hopefully it didn't ruin anything. So now we should be fine. We should be good to go. We have created the image views. We have created the swap chain, the images. And of course we have all sorts of craziness right here for some reason. Okay, so what is the problem? Mm -hmm. What is the problem here? Validation errors. Create image view, sub resource range aspect. Oh, yeah. I forgot the sub resource range. The sub resource range is equal to what the type of this guy? It's a VK image sub resource range. Fine. It's just a struct, not a pointer. Okay. There's aspect mask, base array layer, there's base MIP level, layer count, level count. I don't understand all these things yet, but basically sub resource range, I, I guess it, for example, you could have multiple image layers and then you can set which layer you're talking about here uh, for this specific image view. So if you have, for example, two image layers, you could have two images 
two image views for the same image but for different layers i think or something like that but here the only important thing for now here is aspect mask aspect mask which is of course an enum bk image aspects flags there you go and it's basically you have to tell it like what are you using it for in my case i'm going to use it for uh color because i'm going to use it in my graphics uh, to 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 draw into it using my graphics pipeline of course that we didn't create yet <laughs> all right so i think the graphics pipeline will come next maybe i don't know but we'll see uh, base array layer so base array layer base map level layer count let's leave the validation tell layer tells us okay tell us all right let's see what we got as you can see it says view type oh i forgot about the view type interesting create image view do i need the here view type not here oh what uh dot view there we go view type equal to vk image view now here you actually tell it what is this image supposed to be like is it one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional cube array cube blah 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 uh in this case well the screen is 2d a window is 2d at least for now in in 2022 i don't know if there is anything other than a 2d screen but <laughs> anyway so we're gonna go with vk image view type 2d all right, let's see what the validation layer will tell us again. Again, I will, all right, it's it's actually yelling at us for the level count, the layer count. And for some reason, the image view type. Oh yeah, uh, so as you can see, sub uh, range dot layer count zero must be one when using view type, vk image view type 2D. So basically when you, it says when you're using vk image view type 2D for the aspect, you have to actually use layer count zero. Uh, can't you just do it yourself, bro? <laughs> just joking. So, all inspect states if level count, layer count is not VK remaining. It's not VK remaining. Map levels must be greater than zero. Okay. So, level count and layer count. Okay. Uh, you can use VK remaining MIP levels, but I'm just going to go with one. So, layer count to one. Oh, I already have done that for that one. Okay, um, there's anything else? Level count, layer count. Yep, looks like that's the only problems that we have there. And now it's working. Well, at least it doesn't give us any errors. And now, of course, we have some validation errors. Why? Too simply because we're not destroying the, the images, the image views, as you can see. There we go all right because in fact i'm the one who created them so i'm the one who should destroy them for the images not the image views for the images i don't have to destroy them in fact i shouldn't destroy them because i'm not the one who destroyed them like the swap chain and basically the operating system and stuff like that is the one responsible because if you noticed i didn't create swap chain images i get it swap chain images uh, but for the image views i created them so in cleanup before destroying the device it's important and before maybe destroying the swap chain yeah before destroying the swap chain uh, because in fact uh, i created the swap chain then i created the image views after it so the the, the image views are the ones who are maybe uh yeah are the ones who are, are dependent on the image views so anyway for here for i blah 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 i less than that uh, here we're gonna say state image v swap chain image count there you go uh, we're gonna say destroy image view here we're gonna pass in the device and next up the image view so state uh, swap chain image views and then i the index of the loop Next up, the allocator, state allocator. And with that, we have actually done it. But the only problem though, is that I'm not, I, I forgot, not forgot, but I s still didn't implement 
how you would recreate the swap chain yet. But yeah, now let's just run this and make sure there's no errors anymore. As you can see, there's no errors when quitting, which is nice because I'm actually destroying the images correctly. The problem now uh, with recreating the swap chain is that I'm going to have memory leaks. And you know why I'm going to have memory leaks? Because in fact, here, I'm just the swap chain images and the swap chain image views arrays. I'm not freeing them when recreating the swap chain. Although I'm not recreating the swap chain currently, but you know, it's like I'm just theoretically, um, when I'm gonna recreate the swap chain, or at least I'm gonna need of doing that. So how to do that? Well, I basically before using the those arrays. Am I freeing the formats by the way? Yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah, freeing present modes too. Nice stuff. Now, before using swap chain images and image views, I should make sure to actually free the other stuff. And in fact, uh, I should probably free them before the swap chain. Yeah, let, let's do that. I mean, it doesn't really matter, I guess. In fact, it does matter because indeed, I'm going to actually do the same thing here. I actually have to destroy image views first. Then I have to deallocate or free that array. Okay, let's do that. There you go. Now, of course, I'm using the old value. And if the swap chain is not created yet, this will be just a zero. Okay, so this won't run. It's like it doesn't exist if the, the thing is just getting created, which is nice. Um, for free and stuff, well... But it doesn't, I guess it doesn't hurt to check, maybe. See, swap chain. Actually, I don't want to do this here. I want to do it here, okay. Before destroying the swap chain, okay. So, before destroying the swap chain, and after that... Now, the thing is, let's first make sure that it's valid, it's not null. So, if state... It doesn't matter for the loop, but I mean, since we're doing it anyway, since we need it, let's just put it there. So it's more readable. So state swap chain image count. If it's null, if it's not null actually, which means if it's not, yeah, if, if not null, so if there is something there, right? If state swap chain image count, then Go ahead and free that stuff. So first of all, let's destroy the image views. And by the way, yeah, uh, hold on, not not image count, image views, okay. And then of course we're gonna free free state swap chain image views, swap chain image views. And just in case we can also, but I'm setting that anyway later on, so there's no need. Okay, yeah. Uh, but if you want to be defensive, uh, a defensive programmer, just to make sure, you can also say state uh, swap chain image views uh, equal to null, just to make sure that dangling pointer is never going to be used ever, ever again after freed. Uh, but anyway, let's just, uh, since I'm already, you know, setting it after that, so there's no need. I think so yeah that's for the swap chain image views now the thing is if there is swap chain image views then the, surely they're gonna be uh, like normal images too, swap chain images so I don't have to sit like check twice I can just check for each one of them so I'm just gonna check for swap chain images because it's the more general one anyways just for readability um, and the other one now after freeing this stuff I should also free uh, in fact let's free that before or after mm, no actually after let's go after okay free state swap chain images by the way it doesn't really matter after or before here but I'm just following a convention of whatever I done first I should do it last I, I should free it like I should uh, free it last basically. But anyways, just to make sure everything is fine. All right, now basically I'm 
I'm destroying the image views that are created and then I'm freeing the, the arrays that I have allocated. That's basically how it goes. And then I'm going to reallocate once again here and stuff like that. But yeah. Now this will only work, of course, if the, the swap chain is already created. And then right now we're kind of like just recreating it from scratch. Uh, because we need to recreate the swap chain when, let's say, the, the window get resized, for example. I don't know. So yeah. Now let's just make sure everything is still fine. Seems all good. Um, now, in fact, mm -hmm. now we can go ahead and I'm going to have a flag or Boolean value basically inside my state uh, somewhere around here. Bool. Uh, I'm going to call it recreate swap chain. And of course, it will be false by default or zero. Okay, and now whenever I need to recreate the swap chain, I'm going to actually turn that on. Um, and one of the things that you need that for uh, is when the window gets resized. So where is the window gets resized stuff? Okay, so when we create the window, we have actually to say GFW set frame buffer size callback. Now there's also GFW set uh, there's also GFW set, uh, window size callback. But I don't need that. In fact, you shouldn't use window width and window height. As long as, of course, you, you want to support retina displays. Uh, they're kind of like displays that each, each unit in the, in the units of the window width and window height, there could be sub-pixels, basically. Uh, and those subpixels are viewed by Vulkan and, and graphics APIs in general just as one pixel, okay? Each subpixel is one pixel. Uh, but for the window, basically, they're just... that That's basically the unit, right? Um, so, in fact, you should make sure to use the frame buffer size. Uh, for example, in my in my monitor is not retina display, of course. So the window, the window width and the frame buffer width will be the same thing. Uh, but for retina displays, that's different. All right, so GFW set frame buffer size callback. Now I'm going to set a callback. I'm going to create a callback. So when the frame buffer, not the window, gets resized, but the frame buffer gets resized. Because in fact, let's say you have two monitors, right? Let's just assume we have two monitors. The user have two monitors. When the, when the, when the user gets moves the window from one monitor to the other, you still have the same window size. The window size doesn't change, but if that other monitor actually have a different, like for example, it's not a retina display and the other one is retina display or something like that, then well, it's actually going to change. The fr frame buffer size will change, but the window size won't change. Uh, this is just an example, but there's a lot of crazy things that I, we have to take into account. For example, the monitor could get disconnected and you have to actually go ahead, set the uh, monitor callback and also, you know, like um, account for that. Right now, we're just not going to go that deep. Uh, we're just, I'm only uh, going to set the frame buffer size callback for now. That's the only thing I'm going to worry about for now, because in fact, it's important for the swap chain. Uh, of course, if you want to handle resizable windows, uh, but yeah. Okay, so GFW set frame buffer size callback. Uh -huh. Now, this is the signature of uh, GF. There we go. The callback, there you go. Void. And in fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set a convention on myself that all callbacks uh, maybe would have an on on its start. You know what, let's just go with callbacks at the end for now. So frame buffer, size, callback. Let's call it GFW frame buffer error callback. There we go. Okay, uh, here is the the uh, signature parameters, of course, Callbacks always are void, the return is void. And now, as you can see, we get the window, we get the width, and we get the height. Nice. 
Now the real problem here. Okay, let's let's try to recreate. Uh, just just assuming. Let's or in fact, you know what? The thing is, when when the frame buffer gets resized, what we want is we want to toggle this recreate swap chain to to true. Okay, but uh, we don't have the state here. <laughs> we don't have the state. I cannot say state recreate swap chain blah 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 because i don't have access to the state here state is not a global variable unless if you made it a global variable but then if we made it a global variable then well we lose out the the advantage that we're not using global variables in the, at, at the at the first place so how we can actually use how we can actually get access to the state which is just a variable not a global variable um from this callback now, what are the parameters that we have access to here? We only have access to the GFW window, the width and the height. The width and the height, of course, you cannot get the information from them, okay? But the window is a complicated GFW struct, which can contain a lot of crazy stuff, right? Um, and turns out, you can come here after creating the window, before sitting to callback, uh, ideally, uh -huh. you can say gfw set window pointer user pointer okay and then here you can give it the window which is in this case state window and here void you can notice that it's void pointer and void pointer means that it doesn't care about the type of whatever it's pointing to it only cares about the address of that that object or whatever um, in this case, we're going to pass in our state, okay? <laughs> That's the user pointer, okay? And now, let's pass in the, the callback so we can set it. And of course, we have to actually also say state window to set it to, the, uh, to that window. All right, now, how can I get my state? I still don't have access to the state. I just set it the window user pointer. Well, it's quite simple. Just say state. And now, just say GFW. Get user state. Window user pointer, right? Then you pass in the window. And you're done. You got the state. And notice that here we pass the void pointer. But here, we somehow got a valid state, not a void pointer. But how? Well, since I actually defined the type here. So now C, although get window user pointer gives us a void pointer, which, which is typeless, C automatically goes ahead and casts it to this type, okay? And now I can use it as this type. In fact, I can cast it to whatever I want, but this is the valid one in this case. So, yeah. It's basically, as you can notice here, that GFW doesn't care about what is your pointer, what it's pointing to. It just gives you a pointer void, and then it gives it, it can give you back that pointer by 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 using that window. That's basically it. so. Yeah, and then it's your job to actually cast that pointer to the correct type. Since we have state right now, we can go ahead state dot recreate swap chain to true nice but then here we have two parameters which is called width and height but in fact this is frame buffer width and frame buffer height not window width and window height now that's interesting right so we have to actually uh, uh, store that window width and like a frame buffer width and frame buffer height because that's what we really need to to use as far we shouldn't use window width and window height all right so how we can do that well too simply uh glfw we're gonna have two here i don't want to put it here because i don't want people to think that it's configurable it's not configurable it's going to be set by the the callbacks or the callback so integer frame buffer width and then integer frame buffer height and there you go all right lovely stuff now 
what should I do? Brain buffer with. Now I can just say state. Brain buffer with is equal to with. Basically, when the frame buffer gets resized, it calls this callback and it gives you the new size of the frame buffer. Height equal to height. And there you go. Now you can easily get that. All right, lovely stuff. Next up is, now the problem here with this, I mean, let's actually print every size. I'm gonna show you the problem. Um, what I'm doing, uh, and let's even, you know, just for the sake of the tutorial, let's even say width and height, just to show you that it is actually working as expected with height. Now, if you run this, notice that it doesn't run at the start. But when I resize, well, I cannot resize it currently. But um, if I go to, let's see, if I, hmm, where I wanted to go. Oh, yeah, uh, I want to set resizable to true. Now, if we've done that. Look at that, it gets resized and it tells me the the new width and the new height. The problem with this though right now is that it doesn't tell me the, it doesn't uh, trigger that callback at the start of the application, which means that at the start of the application, that frame buffer size, that frame buffer width and height will be zero, basically initialized, which is not the correct values, right? Um, so what we can do we can actually call that callback ourselves at the start or like after creating the window as to initialize it okay so that's what i'm going to do actually here boom but the thing is now it's my job it's my responsibility to give it the correct parameters uh, not gfw at this point c window i have to pass it c window now i have to pass it the the new width and height, but in my case, it's the actual window current width and height, but not window actually, frame buffer width and height. And that's why I cannot use the width and height that we have right now. I need to actually use GFW to get the frame buffer size. Not frame size, frame buffer, buffer size. Okay, uh, state window. And here it passes to me the width and the height. Of the frame buffer. Now I can actually go ahead and say integer width and height. There you go. Is it integer? Yeah, I have to just give it a reference, the address of those uh, variables, so it can put the width and height there. And now I can just pass it to width and height uh, to uh, the callback. And now if we run this right now, as you can see at the start right now of the application, it goes ahead and it calls that which will make sure to, to set recreate swap chain to true. And it will also set frame buffer width and height. And since it actually sets the recreate swap chain to true, that means that the first frame, we're going to recreate the swap chain two times. <laughs> and that's a big bug right there. So now, instead of creating the swap chain at the start in init, uh, where is it? There you go. Instead of doing the here, I should actually right now do it in the loop, in the loop, right? But by the way, after the GFW pull events, because all the callbacks will get called here in this in this place when when you pull the events, because here will it process the events and call the corresponding callbacks that you set it. Okay, so after the events processing, we're gonna say if recreate swap chain. If we need to recreate the swap chain, it's say recreate swap chain. Then well, we're gonna go ahead, create the swap chain. Nice, lovely. So, and now I can actually say printf recreated swap chain. Let's add the new line for flushing the output. Oh, oh, oh. okay, so this is the problem. We, we set to recreate swap chain to true, but we, well, we don't set it back to false. So 
when we recreate the swap chain, we have to tell it that we have created it. And how? Well, just set it back to false. So it doesn't create it again the next time until it is actually genuinely need to rec be recreated. And now, as you can see, it only recreated the once at the start. But then we resize the window, it gets resized, it gets recreated once again, which is awesome. Nice, lovely stuff. Now we can actually acquire image, if I'm not mistaken. And let's see, I don't remember exactly, but let's see if that's possible currently. Acquire, well, let's just say swap chain. Hmm, I don't remember what it's called though. Counter, create, swap chain, KHR. Uh, okay, let's go to Vulcan.h though. I'm gonna search for something. Hmm, I remember something like VK acquire swap chain image, kind of weird. Okay, acquire swap chain. Oh man, acquire swap chain image. Yo, what did I just create that name myself or something? <laughs> oh man, really, bro? What? Vulcan. Oh, well, this is the weird. Oh man, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Did I just create that name myself or something? <laughs> Let me see the Vulcan tutorial real quick. Oh man. If we go to drawing triangle. Come on, come on, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Let's go presentation. The connection is so slow nowadays for some reason for me. Swap chain. There you go. The swap chain. But here it's not using it yet. Probably, yeah, swap chain recreation. Let's see what it does there. Uh, although it's doing it last, but I'm doing it first anyways. Uh, at least the setup. Clean up swap chain. Destroy. By the way, yeah, we have to actually create frame buffers too, which is crazy. Uh, but not now. Destroy surface gauge hard device, blah, 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 blah. There we go. VK acquire next image KHR. Yeah, this one. So why it's not there? Yo, what? Well, that is crazy. Okay, let's see the loop. Where is the loop? Oh man, that's so long. Okay, so VK acquire. What I was using before, I don't understand. I have to actually rewatch the video to see what, what stupid error I was doing that it doesn't show up. It's weird. I think I was included swap chain for some reason, maybe. Anyways, state device and then state swap chain. Uh, timeout. Well, I'm just going to say you enter the two. Actually, you enter 64 max. Basically, I'm saying to wait infinitely. There's no timeout. And then you have the semaphore. And then you have the fence. VK semaphore and VK fence. Okay, semaphore and fence. And then image index. And then it gives you the image index. Nice. All right, image index. Now I can actually here in 32 probably. Image index. And I need to create the fence and the semaphore that it, that it wants. Create the semaphore and the fence. Now semaphore and the fence are used for synchronization. Um, 
So yeah, semaphore defense. I don't really remember well which one I need. I probably only need defense though. Um, because one of them is used for synchronizing the host with the device, basically the GPU with the CPU. Um, and the other is just used to synchronize, you know, device with device, basically queues, for example, different queues. Um, I think so. But let's just set it to no and see what's going to happen though. And now let's just print F maybe image index and C and C in action. Okay, what's happened here? Uh, of course, yeah. All right. Oh man, that's a lot of ones there. All right. And okay, so as you can see, it's given me the first image. Uh, well, in fact, not the first, probably the second because it's one, you know? Yeah. I'm not sure why it doesn't give zero, but I think the zero probably is actually the one that is supposed to be presented, maybe. But anyway, for for now, in fact, I'm getting the 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 same image because I'm not presenting the current image to the screen. So vk pres q present khr, and here where I'm actually going to use my pre present q. In my case, I only have one q, and here I need to create that vk present info khr. And next up is uh, const vk present info kchr. Uh, and I think that's it, right? Yeah, probably it. Let's see what, what, what we have here. Okay, here it actually said the, all right, interesting. So here you said the swap chain and stuff like that. First of all, S type, so vk structure type. Present info KHR and also image indices. Yep, image indices. Okay, here I'm actually just gonna say one image index, EN32T image index that we got from the acquire next image and P uh, or image count, I think, or Hold on. How it's not getting the count of the image indices? That is weird. All right, fine. Uh, P results. Why does it do it like this? Crazy. Okay, fine. Now, what I'm really supposed to do now, I only have one swap chain. And uh, the array of swap chains, I only care about one swap chain, which is going to give a reference to state swap chain. And hopefully that works. What do you mean? Bro, just save the dictionary. Come on. All right. Nice stuff. And what else? So we also have P weight semaphores and weight semaphore count. All right. So you have to use a semaphore. Well, currently I'm not going to wait for any crazy semaphores. I, well, I do need to do that actually, really. I mean, <laughs> Q present and it does gives us a result. Now this result there's two things. There's either VK error out of date or suboptimal KHR. So this is the first time that I have to actually handle a result in the, that I can actually not error when a result happens, when an error happens. Equal to VK error out of date KHR or a result equal to suboptimal. Vk suboptimal. 
uh, without going crazy about we'll explaining these, but basically when those happens, you should recreate the swap chain. Uh, so yeah, at least uh, as as cl as close as possible. Like so yeah, recreate the swap chain. But in our case, we only have create swap chain, so we just called it create swap chain. Yeah, I actually called it like that. Okay. Create swap chain state. Or actually not create... Hold on, what? Yeah, this or... Or this recreate swap chain thing. Or in fact, I can just say state recreate swap chain here. Yep, equal to true. There you go. Now when it's gonna go back to to the other iteration, it's gonna go ahead and recreate it. Which is interesting. It's also using some frames in flight and crazy stuff like that. Um, and then it's waiting for fences in flight and that's some in flight stuff. All uh, right, image available, semaphore. Okay, now I remember. So, now this is actually interesting. There's a lot of stuff that goes into this. Uh, so, I don't want to go into synchronization in this episode. It's going to get even crazier. Um, well, let's just see if this works. <laughs> Although we're not synchronizing anything. Which is of course not a good not a good thing to do, but oh man, we're we're actually getting a black screen for some reason. Crazy stuff. Uh weird that we're getting black screen. Because I'm still not rendering. Semaphores and fence are both AK null handle. Okay, so you should either use the semaphore or the fence. Now, yeah, we're just gonna leave this for for next time, okay? AKQ present KHR, blah, blah, blah. Because I don't wanna go into synchronization currently. <laughs> so yeah, let's actually just comment this out. I, if I remember, control shift, shift, slash. There you go. For now, let's just go ahead and do this. Uh, but I do need this guy. Yeah, I do need this guy. But Alright, so I'm just gonna do it with this one. Alright, awesome. As you can see, we're recreating swap chain, which is all lovely. All right, so that's it, I think, for this video. Next time, we're probably gonna handle this craziness. And we're gonna synchronize stuff up. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty much it, I believe. Hopefully, I didn't miss any errors. State, recreate, swap chain. Yeah, pretty much it. it I think it's all good. So I don't have to print this stuff for now. No need to print that stuff. I think if there's anyone who wants to contribute, you're welcome. I, in fact, I I uh, support you like to to actually go ahead and contribute so we can use Git and and just so we can get to help each other and because in fact I'm also a beginner though so. Yeah. Anyways, um, I think we're all good. Okay, let's just remove that print resized. And that's pretty much it, I believe. So yeah, that was a lot of stuff. We'll, I'm probably going to actually, you know, go ahead and take that swap chain creation function and like break it into multiple functions because it's just too big. For now, I mean, we just got to deal with this for now. So, yeah. 
uh, if, if it's possible, I'm probably going to break it into multiple functions in the future. Mm, so yeah, that was it. Let me make sure there's no errors, nothing crazy. Yep, looking all good. Nice stuff. Lovely. And so yeah, that's it. By the way, what happens when you... Hmm. Anyway, so that was it for this video and see you later. Goodbye, everyone.